Hello, and welcome back to CS11. This is lecture number four, corresponding to textbook sections 2.4 and 2.5. Section 2.4 is problem solving, and uh, I only have uh, one comment to uh, make about that, because I believe the section in the textbook is, is quite good and stands on its own, but I really like this quote from the beginning of section 2.4. A very important step for developing an algorithm is to first carry out the computations by hand. If you can't compute a solution yourself, it's unlikely that you'll be able to write a program that automates the computation. Let's talk about strings. There's some really nifty stuff in section 2.5, and I want to show you at least a couple of things that aren't in section 2.5. First of all, if you're going to use strings, Strings, by the way, are uh, variables that carry text. Previously, we've talked about two types of numeric variables, ints and doubles. A lot of the functionality for working with strings is in the string library. But often, you won't have to include it, and that is because on many systems, um, it's included automatically when you include IO stream. So, for example, here in our test params, I'm going to try and comment that out, and I believe our params will all still work. Um, you may occasionally need to pound include string. On some systems, it may not be included for you automatically. Or there may be times when you don't need to use I.O. stream, but that you still need to use string. But now let's create a string variable, and let's create a variable. I'll call it f name for first name. Unlike integer and double variables, which we talked about previously, strings are automatically initialized for you. That is to a blank or empty string. Um, and so you don't have to worry about uh, garbage values. So saying here, string f name and string f name equals quote, quote, with no space between them uh, for uh, no characters or an entirely blank string uh, is exactly the same thing. All right, well, let's make another string here. L name equals Hodges. Why don't we change F name here? I'll change that to be my first name. And the first operation that I want to show you with strings is concatenation, or appending strings together, which you can do using the plus sign, the same plus sign that we also use for addition with numeric values. So here I'll say F name plus L name. Okay, and then why don't we output that? and see out name and end line. Okay, well let's go ahead and compile this program. Minus wall, minus pedantic, and this is called lecture4.cpp. Okay, compiled with no warnings, and we run it, and notice that my uh, name outputs, but it's run together without any spaces. That's because these strings here don't have any spaces in them. A couple of ways I could fix that would be for, to add space to one of those strings. Another way would be to leave them as they were and to append a space in the um, when I'm joining my first and last name together. And there we see that. Okay, so here we've seen some examples of uh, doing assignment and also uh, concatenation or appending strings. All right, well, what if we don't want to hard code the strings into the program, but instead um, have the user type them in? So let's go ahead and I will comment this portion of the program out because I'm done with it. And let's say here I'll say C out hello. What is your name? And then previously we talked about the CN uh, command, and here we'll use that with name. Previously we did uh, CN with uh, integers or doubles, and here we'll see that it works with strings. So go ahead and compile, and uh, oh, whoops, I, I uh, commented out my declaration. Let's put the, that back in. String name. Can't read into a variable that hasn't been declared because it doesn't exist. And so that's what this error message is telling me. Undeclared identifier. It's telling me that that doesn't exist. Okay, let's recompile and 
and I'll run the program. A dot out. What is your name? Steve. And here it says Steve. Now, if we wanted to make the output a little fancier, we could have it say, Hi, Steve, or something like that. Let's go ahead and run it again, and this time I'll type in my full name. Well, how about just my first and last name? And hit Enter, and notice here it still just says Steve. And that's because the uh, stream extraction operator here that we're using with CN is delimited by white space. White space uh, means... Uh, spaces, uh, tabs, and newline characters. And so when we asked it to read in a string and typed in Steve Hodges, the computer read in these characters and then saw there was a space and says, ah, that ended the string. And so it took the word Steve and put it in this name variable here. Now, in um, some of the uh, example programs and exercises in chapter 4, um, the way that they're going to have you deal with this issue is to input more than one string. For example, if we knew that the person was always going to type in two words, we could do two CN statements, such as F name and CN L name. And here Let's declare two strings, f name and l name. And here, just to show it's working, why don't we output their last name and then a comma, a space, and then their first name. And we'll go ahead and save that. And compile and run. And I'll type in my first name and my last name, and notice it comes out in the other order. So um, you could use that technique to read multiple pieces, but that technique is only going to work really reliably for you if you know exactly how many words that somebody's typing in. So let me show you an alternate input command, and that is the getLine command, which is an, another method for doing input for strings. So it's another kind of command, different than cn. And to use the getLine command, you give it the cn and then a string variable. And what the getLine command does, which you might be able to guess by its name, is get an entire line of text. Let's go ahead and comment this line out. And here I'll see out um, the entire name. Okay, so let's compile and run this program. And what is my name? And notice now it read in the uh, entire string. So that's the get line command, which you can use if you need to re read in several words at once and you don't know how many they're going to be. Now, one very important rule is don't mix getLine and CN with the um, extraction operator in the same program. Pick one or the other. We won't ever talk about why that is in this class. All right, well, let's talk about some string operations. First one is the length command which looks like this. Give it one of your strings, and then a dot, and then the word length and parentheses. And that, when you run dot length against any one of your string variables, will tell you what is the length of that string and number of characters. And it can be as few as zero if the string is blank, so let's run this program again, and I'll type in my name. And, uh, oh, whoops, I didn't recompile the program. Let's not forget that. And let's fix that and run it. And what is your name? And there it is, and 15 characters. Now, uh, what if we want to verify that it is actually 15 characters? Let me show you this trick that um, I learned <laughs> many decades ago while working with some other programming languages. 
zero one two three four five six seven eight nine zero one two three four five six seven eight nine and we can repeat that as necessary zero one two three four five six seven eight nine All right, and let's recompile and run. And what is your name? Steve J. Hodges. And there is our output, 15 characters. And here, the first character, notice I've labeled as zero. And we'll talk about why that is in a moment. Um, so here, zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. There's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And so, 15 characters in total. Now, why did count start at zero? And the reason for that is internally, that's how the string keeps track of its characters, uh, the positions. And we can get back a single character if we give it that position, starting with a zero. Let me show you that. So let's insert. To get a single character from a string, you put the name of the string and follow that with a opening square bracket, not a parenthesis or a brace, and then the position from that string that you want to get the character. If that value that's in there is not legal and doesn't actually match up with the actual position in your string, you will crash your program. That's a fatal error. So we want to be very careful. Normally, we would check the length, get the length first, and then make sure that whatever value we're putting here is greater than or equal to zero, and then um, less than whatever this length is. Now, we haven't learned how to do that yet, of course, so that will be something coming up. Let's compile the program and run. Hello, what is your name? And there we get just the S in position zero. Now, when we do this, name zero is no longer a string, but is instead another type of variable known as a char. Let me show you that. Um, char C, we'll call it C. And we'll compile. And it's giving me a warning because I haven't done anything with C. So to make the compiler happy, let's output C and cut that line and paste it on the other side. That will keep the compiler happy. And we can run. And there, notice now we have just that first one character called C. Now, this is only one way to get um, uh, extract a character out of a string. And in fact, there's an even more powerful technique that can get you not only one character, but um, several characters, as many as you want, and that's the substring command. Now, unlike using the square brackets, when you use the substring command to get a portion of a string from another string, what you get back is another string variable, even if you only take one or even zero characters, so it's not a char. All right, so once again, in, as in with the square brackets, the values that you put in the substring command have to be correct, and if they represent characters that don't exist in that string, uh, you will crash the program. And so, we'll, and we'll learn more about how to test that in a future lecture. So here, let's say, during first five equals name dot. So the command is substring s u b s t r. Once again, just with the length command, we use the dot to connect the name of the string and the name of the operation that we want to perform on that string. But unlike the length, inside of the parentheses, we put two parameters, the starting position, and we already know that the first position as a string is zero, followed by the length, the number of characters that we want to retrieve. This command here says, Starting at the very first position in the string, numbered zero, get the first five character and assign them to first five. And so now here, C out first, first five, end line. All right. 
My screen's getting a little messy. Let's clear that up. Let's recompile the program and run the program. And we'll run it. And notice there, now we have just the first five characters that were extracted from our larger string. Okay, well that wraps up a very brief tour of the um, strict character strings in C++ and some of their most basic and useful functions. Thank you.